Hello, my name's Gavin. This is Genre Books. And we're in the middle of August. We're in the middle of Garb August. I'm making solid progress with the Garbingo card. But I've already got one eye on what's happening in September. And there are a few events I want to get involved in. As well as the events, there's some stuff that I want to read on top of that. Fortunately, I don't think the events in September are going to be as time consuming and all encompassing and attention grabbing and visceral as Garb August or Rocket Summer. But I still want to give them due consideration. The big event for September for me is going to be Shake Timber. This is an event created by Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading, Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse, and Nicole at A Day of Small Things. As far as literature goes, this is like the, the biggest canvas ever. What do I want to do the event on? And I could have gone a number of different ways. I toyed briefly with the insanity of trying to read everything within September. And decided that would be ridiculous. I'm still going to read a chunk of Shakespeare. And I'm going to concentrate on some plays which I don't think get, often get, the attention they deserve. A couple of them do. The majority of them don't. That's the histories. I'm not going to be reading the annotated, explained, scholarly editions of these plays. I am just going to be using my collected works of Shakespeare and probably reading what must be about a quarter of this. I'm also not going to be reading them in the order which Shakespeare wrote them. I am going to be reading them in the order in which the monarchs were. So that is King John, Richard II, Henry IV, part 1 and 2, Henry V, Henry VI, part 1, 2 and 3, Richard III and Henry VIII. It's a bit of a sandwich because King John and Henry VIII are at a remove from the rest of the action um, at each end. There's a, enough of a gap between the death of um, King John and the ascension of Richard II. You have at least some Henrys and some Edwards in there. And at the other end, you are missing um, the reign of the first Tudor king, Henry VII. He turns up at the end of Richard III, but we're not seeing anything of his reign. Probably due to propaganda purposes. But this is something I'm going to be looking at. Uh, if you bear with me, I'm just going to put this book down now, because it's quite heavy to hold up for any length of time. The themes, I hope, are going to be apparent to me once I'm reading through the lot in in chronological order. But I think the themes are going to be around succession, legitimacy, um, maturity, the growing into a role, and also a fair whack of propaganda. I have read Henry IV Part 1 and 2, I've read Henry V, and I've read Richard III, but the others are going to be new to me. So one of the main reasons I chose the histories um, to do this year. And I hope there will be further years of Shake Timber so I can look at the tragedies one year, the comedies another, uh, maybe the... Uh, 
the problem plays or just stick the problem plays into one of the other previous two camps. Also, maybe one year, just concentrate on the long poems and the sonnets. There's plenty to do when it comes to Shakespeare. But I will also be doing the Shakespeare Journey tag during September, which I believe quite a few people did last year. So I am playing catch up. To maybe stop me believing too much of Shakespeare's propaganda and or maybe just to read someone else's propaganda about the uh, the same time frame. I'm going to be relying on my own knowledge of history. I did do a history A-level 30 years ago now. 32 years ago? Yeah, oh hell. Um, but I'm also going to be relying on two volumes of uh, History of England, which is a series from the Folio Society. So this is early medieval England. Um, I won't be reading all of these books, but just the just the pertinent bits. So for this first volume, we have um, the Poitevins. So there is a section on King John and England in the later Middle Ages, where we have where we have the reign of Richard II, Henry IV, the reign of Henry V, Henry VI, Henry VI and France, the Wars of the Roses, um, and then Richard III. Now we're missing Edward IV there, and we're also all missing Edward V, and quite frankly we're not entirely sure where he is. They won't let us test the bones. For some reason the Crown won't let us DNA test the bones of who we think uh, is uh, Edward V and his brother who were found in the Tower of London. But in case all that sounds very dry, looking at the histories, I'm also going to be reading um, No Bed for Bacon, a comedy by Carol Brahms and S.J. Simon about, well, I think Shakespeare's in it, um, Francis Bacon's in it, I think Ben Johnson's in it as well. And of course Elizabeth I is in it. It supposedly is funny, so I will give it a go. I could quite easily have spent the entire month on Shakespeare and nothing else. In fact, I could probably have spent the rest of my days on Shakespeare and nothing else. But let us be disciplined, because it also in September is framed uh, an art event. There are a number of co-hosts for this event. There is Elizabeth at uh, Buchan's Books. There is Greg at another Bibliophile Reads. Hannah at Hannah's Books. Lindy at Lindy Magpie Reads. And Heather at uh, Heather Greg 9975. There are three prompts. One is to read a book about art. Two is to experience art. And three which is not a compulsory part of the event, but is to create some art or talk about an appreciation of art. So for a book about art, I have somewhere here, um, Vasari's Lives of the Artist. I've got some Ruskin here, who obviously has written about art. I've got um, uh, the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction from uh, Walter Benjamin. But instead, I'm going to concentrate on something which I don't know if it's lowbrow or not. I want to look at the big old coffee table book. The book you will buy in the gift shop having gone to an exhibition. The guidebook to the classics of a museum or a gallery. I have a feeling, perhaps a paranoia, that some people look down on these books, but I really like them. I have some four exhibitions that I went to decades ago where I would have forgotten about them by now. I may have forgotten where I saw a particular painting. This is gonna, you know, 
they will always help me jog my memory. But what people don't do with these books is read them. They'll peruse them, they'll sample them. There may be an essay in there that they'll read. But I don't think, I, perhaps this is just me, I don't think I've ever sat down and read one cover to cover. So let's change that this September. The Victoria and Albert Museum 21 years ago had an exhibition on Art Deco and I have the big old coffee table book that accompanied that exhibition. So I'm interested. I must have been interested otherwise I wouldn't have gone to the exhibition. But I'm interested enough to uh, read it and see if you know it holds together to tell the story of the art movement as or you know as well as just being a guide to showing off what they managed to get for their exhibition and if i get the time i am going to read a book about my two favorite concurrent art movements um a book i've not read before but a story i am a little familiar with and that is uh, Dada and Surrealism. For experiencing art, I work in London. I should be able to find a decent gallery and visit. And for creating art, well, we'll see. If you're worried that all of this Shakespeare and art is sounding a little too highfalutin, don't worry, because September is also Sumerian September or Sumerian summer I forget quite the name of it but it's the Conan the Barbarian reading event created by Michael K Vaughan I missed out on this last September but I did in the last year get hold of a copy of the coming of Conan the Sumerian so I will not be following the event closely because the event is all about the pastiche but I didn't actually get to read the original I am behind on my Robert E Howard I have read a little I have never sat down to read Conan in this kind of uh, amount so throughout the month of September, I will be dipping in and finishing this book. I also do think I have a pastiche Conan book somewhere in El Sprague de Camp. So if I find that and I have time, I'll read that as well. But that is not my priority list item for Sumerian summer, Sumerian September. I want to get the primary texts out of the way. And I've not forgotten about the tote bag of mild peril the last pick i made last week having finished uh fu manchu was john kennedy tools a confederacy of dunces i hear nothing but good things about this book even though the main character is apparently something of a rotter but it's supposed to be at now, um, I think it's published posthumously. I don't know a lot about uh, the author. Um, if there was an introduction here well, that has a forward, um, I may find out something about him as well. Um, but I'm interested to uh, read this and see what the fuss is about. And I do like a good comedy. And speaking of comedians, the Utah State Board of education have decided to ban more books in order to give a much needed two-fingered salute to these pea-brained troglodyte frigid chances uh mj at reading this life uh, as part of the banned books 24 ban books in 24 series has convened a group read of 
uh, Sarah J. Mass's A Court of Thorn and Roses. Well done, the Utah State Board of Education. I would never have read this book in a month of Sundays had it not been for you. Your stupidity and small-mindedness has gone transatlantic. And because I find closed-mindedness and bigotry depressing, I will be ending the month with some comedy. In the hope that I find the comedy funny. I may struggle because I don't think I'm the target audience in a way for these books and I'm very much the target audience in another way. The Harvard Lampoon and the National Lampoon. Grammaticus Books recently did um, a review of Board of the Rings, the Lord of the Rings parody from the Harvard Lampoon. I do have a copy here somewhere which I will need to dig out. But I also have National Lampoon's Dune, a Dune parody. Um, yes, it has beer on the front cover. And pancakes, biscuits, something on the back cover. I first showed this book in a book haul earlier this year and someone kindly pointed out to me something which should have been absolutely obvious from from the off and that is the cover artist for this parody of Dune is the same cover artist from one of the classic covers of Dune and I like that attention to detail so I'm I have high hopes. I hope. I think the problem with these books is what may be a funny idea doesn't stretch to, you know, in this case, 160 pages. It needs something a little bit more than just funny names. But I'm not going to prejudge this. I'm going to read both this and hopefully Board of the Rings and let you know my thoughts. September feels like a short month. And that feels like a full program of events. And doubtless, halfway through September, I'll already be looking forward to uh, Victober. I'm going to say the events are relentless. I, I may have to ease up in November and December to catch up with books I might not have been able to finish because of the speed we've been moving through these events. And also maybe just a little bit of festive mood reading and gearing up for the program beginning all again in 2025 we'll see there may just be events i've not heard of yet um if you had said to me back in april are you going to be involved with shake timber i would have said no and i would have been wrong because here i am so as a famous football manager once said I never make predictions and I never will bye